Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and this is Sarah's Creative Corner. I think that's what I'm going to call this podcast. Um, and this will just be a podcast on knitting, spinning, maybe the very occasional crochet um, and sewing. So yeah, I just wanted to start this video series, I guess, so I can keep myself accountable of all the things that I have. Um, so I don't get too far off track of what I would like to do. Um, and since this is the first episode, I guess we can just kind of go through all the whips that I have and I can talk about them and give you all the details. And then I'll talk about my plans for the future once I get at least some of these <laughs> off the needle. So my first item is actually a half object. Um, it is a sock. We got this. It is just a vanilla sock. I use Crazy Sock Lady's vanilla sock pattern um, for her numbers for things. Um, and yeah, for these ones, I knit 64 stitches and um, did the magic loop with US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter. Um, and then I did a 20 round cuff, 60 round leg, and I actually tried out a new heel, which is an eye of partridge heel. I don't know if you can really tell, kind of. Um, I'm, I've been trying out some new heels recently, so this is the one that I did for this one. So that is the first sock done. And I actually have the second one cast on and I am close to being done with the cuff. So once I'm done with the cuff, I can just get straight on to the leg and should be pretty smooth sailing from there. Um, I actually, the, this yarn is by the Knitting Bro, um, the Wild Thing colorway. I'm not sure if he's still dyeing yarn, but I'll link it down below if he is. I really like how variegated and like not stripy the socks ended up. So yeah, pretty pleased so far. So that is the first object. Okay, and the second whip I have is another sock. Um, I have this sock. You can tell it's like slightly textured. Um, so these ones are Hermione's Everyday Sock. Um, I cannot tell you the designer off the top of my head, but I will put it on the screen. <laughs> um, and for these ones, I did knit two, purl two, cuff, and I did 60 rounds of the pattern. I can't tell you how many, I guess that's 20 repeats, because um, it's a four round repeat. Um, it is a free pattern, by the way. And I am just barely started with the heel. I don't know, yeah, you can just, see the tiny start of it right there um and yeah this is yarn by queen city yarns um i got it at yarn centric two years ago so glad to have it on my needles get it out of my stash um and so far so good um i really like just like the pop color and it's a really fun sock so yeah I guess that's really it about the sock. Oh, um, and I'm also not doing the eye of partridge heel that's in the pattern. It like has a gusset edge, or not gusset, it has a garter edge, um, but I'm just doing like a normal, normal one like I did for the other sock. So yeah, just need to get through the heel and the gusset and then the foot will be pretty smooth sailing from there. And 
for my socks. Um, I know there's like different ways that people will do the foot. Um, I am a sock down or top cuff down sock knitter. Um, and so I will actually use a sock ruler and I don't know if you'll be able to see, I have the initials of some people that I knit socks for. Um, and just like their shoes or their foot size subtracted with, by the toe. Um, and I'll knit the foot until I get to that distance. And I find it to be pretty good. Um, sometimes my real gauge is off between socks, just like within a pair. So I find it so much more accurate if I just use this. So I don't have to worry about, oh, is one sock needs 50 rounds for the foot and the other one needs 60 um I can just do it by length on this and it's great so yeah that is how I do my socks all right I guess yeah the next object I have is you guys have already probably seen so many of these it is a Sophie shawl this is mine it's pretty long now um, I am knitting it out of Woolberry Fiberco in one of their collective colorways called Cloud Forest. I think it was a collective colorway. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I got this and it is the worsted weight. So yeah, I'm knitting the largest size of the shawl and I'm about done with the first skein um and should be starting the second skein sometime this week hopefully um and yeah that's really it just been going back and forth on this sometimes I'll pick it up sometimes I won't it's not really like I'm not super stressed about about this one so yeah and I've been keeping track of my of a pattern repeat it's just that I have like two little light bulb stitch markers. So when I do the like increase, I'll just stick a stick the light bulb stitch marker in, like move the bottom one up, and then do the repeat and just keep doing the same thing. And I find that to actually helps me keep track of it so much easier um, than trying to count the garter stitch rows. Um, so yeah really been enjoying it and it's so soft and squishy and um I don't think I'll have it done for this winter but hopefully I can have it done by next winter fingers crossed all right I'm just piling all my knits up over here all right the next knit that is on my floor pile is a pattern by Tori Yu of Tori Knits NYC. It is the Manhattan hat. It doesn't really look like much right now, but I'm just knitting the body of the hat right now. I am at about 10 inches and I'm going to knit it to about 13. So this is actually not for me. This is for a fellow knitter and um, I'm doing the double folded brim option for her and I'm also I also cast on extra stitches on top of like the already largest size um because she's a big headed girly like I am and I just want to make sure that it actually fits and she has sensitive you know she doesn't want like too much negative ease so I thought just casting on a set an extra set of eight stitches shouldn't be too bad um so with the extra circumference I'm actually planning on knitting it just a little hair longer um to kind of make up for like when you pull it out it's gonna shrink down a little bit um just so it has the right amount of slouch and I need about like three more inches and I should be there and this is in Barocco Comfort. I don't know what the color number is, um, but I'll just put it on the screen. And I actually also have a little 
progress keeper from hello lavender on here too it's one of her um like scrappy ones i guess and they're so nice so i've been putting them on a lot of my projects as you all see um so yeah i probably will be able to finish this this week um because it's actually due I'm supposed to send it out next week. So, yeah. That is my Baroque Comfort Manhattan hat. Alright. Let's see. My next one is... I'm sure you all have also seen this one. Um, it is... A half and half wrap. If you want to take a look... And I also have actually started the second half. Um, so this pink is called Rhubarb Pink, I believe. And then this like taupey gray is called Pale Mushroom. Um, and this is the half and half wrap, Triangles Wrap by Pearl Soho. Um, and it's in the... Pearl Soho yarn linen quill. Um, I was actually really unsure about this yarn for a while, um, but it's actually knitting up so nicely, um, and I will probably knit another one out of this because it's so squishy and soft, and it's just like a giant blanket right now, and it's just so nice, and I am a little worried about how big it's gonna get, but I'm also really excited. Um, and I'm knitting the larger of the two sizes. Um, and I actually have the leftovers. I have, I have like almost all of the first or the third skein left. So I need to figure out what to do with this. Um, so yeah, just for FYI, maybe it's just my gauge. Um, but yeah, it was a little. A little frustrating that I just like had to crack in maybe like I think I can show you like right here for the last skein but that's okay um and another modification that I'm doing is I'm doing an eye cord edge I don't know if you'll be able to see that kind of um and yeah Oh, and I'm also doing German short rows instead of the wrap and turns. Um, and I don't, like, put a stitch marker in where the German short row is, like, where the double stitch is, because I can tell where it is. <laughs> and to me, it would be a hassle to keep on putting in and out a stitch marker when I can just read my stitch. So, yeah. As you can tell, the yarn is a little crinkly a little bit um I actually was like closer to up here like a couple weeks ago and I realized I was doing my eye cord edge wrong um so I went to fix this side and then when I got to the top I just couldn't figure out what I did so I just ripped out all of the pale mushroom that I did and we'll see if I regret that. Right now, I don't. Um, I mean, it's just garter stitch knitting. So I'm not that impressed. And it's more time to knit, right? Um, and I think that's really it about this one. Um, really having a good time. And I should probably put a stitch marker on this one. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess also I'm really worried about blocking this because we live in a condo with two dogs and there's no space to block something this large. But I have some friends who work in a dye studio, so maybe they can block it there. So fingers crossed. So that is 
number five. Number five. Um, and the last three are sweaters. So I'll do this sweater over here. All right. This is the... Get it all situated. Lighthouse caper pullover. As you can tell, I don't have that much done. Um, it is by Lindsay Fowler. I'm not sure if it has been released on its own, but it's in her book, Salt and Timber. And one of my old co workers knit one of these, and I was obsessed, and I had to knit one. So I just bought the book. Well, I bought the book like a year ago, <laughs> um, but I mainly bought the book for this pattern, but a lot of the other patterns in the book are really cute, so I'll have to take a gander again. Um, and this is knit up in Magpie Fibers mm, Quartet Worsted and Plume. If you want to take a look, here's my ends. So it is in one of their summer colorways from last year um, in Say Chic. So it's like a pinky purple. The lighting isn't that great in here. Um, it's like a pinky purple. Um, and yeah, I'm working on the raglan increases and it has a compound raglan. I'm getting right towards the end of the normal raglan and I'm about to start like the compound swooshy part. So yeah, excited to finish this up or at least like just get chugging on it. Um, so yeah, it's super, super squishy and it'll be really nice to have for the next cold season. Oh, and I did make one modification, I guess two modifications. The first one that I did is I ended up doing a provisional cast on using, um, like a barber cord with stitch holders and then did the folded over um collar i find it so much easier and if i find that the base of the collar stretches out too much i can just like lightly do like a crochet chain around it but i haven't i have another sweater that i did this on and i don't find that the collar like stretches or flares out too much so we'll see um and then the second modification i did i don't know if you noticed i actually did short rows to bring the back up and the neck down or the front down um i did four sets of short rows to kind of help with that and it took me a little bit to figure it out but we figured it out so we're chugging along on this all right and the next one I have is pull it out. So this is the I can figure out where the front is. Um I guess this is the front, yeah. This is the cargo sweater. Um I have had this on for quite some time. Um, it was a little bit of a start and go with this one at the beginning. Um, I tried to hack the pattern so I could do the same like collar thing as this one. But you know, Rebecca, she, she knows what she, she knows how she designed the pattern. <laughs> um, yeah, this is designed by Rebecca Clo of the Crayabea. Um, and it's actually a dip stitch pattern and it's really cozy and cute. Um, and I'm knitting it out of Woolberry Fiber Co. again in their Camp Woolberry colorway on both the mohair and the natural fingering. Um, and the mohair, I find is like not super scratchy. I do have a sweater that has mohair in it actually two and it's just like a touch scratchy and I have to wear something under this but we'll see if this one is the same 
um, just chugging along through these raglan increases. Um, I think it's been a bit much for my brain right now to do the dip stitch and the raglan increases and all that sort of stuff. It was crazy when I was doing the short rows too because there are short rows in this pattern. Um, but I think once I get to the body eventually it should be good because I'll just be going in a circle. Um, but I'm really excited for this and I think it'll be a nice neutral but like kind of colorful pattern and I really like how it's knitting up with like all the golden tones, yellows, reds, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that is this one. And then last but not least is actually a test that I'm doing for Miss Tori Yu of Tori Knits NYC. I've done a couple of tests for her in the past and this is the current one that I'm doing. Um, if I can get everything untangled. So I am testing her Uptown Pullover. I am knitting it in Pearl Soho's Goodwill. Um, and yeah, since it's a test, I'm not making any modifications um, yet, but so far so good. I was in a waiting, in a waiting room and every knitter's nightmare, I ran out of yarn while I was waiting, um, but that was actually okay because I was knitting on the body and I actually did want to start knitting on the sleeve anyway. So I started knitting on the sleeve and it has like this really nice like open mesh like detail for the whole entire sleeve. Um, and it's like super meditative to do and it's like a two row repeat. So it's kind of potato chippy, kind of like with the Hermione's Everyday Socks. So just been chugging along on this and yeah, I have all of the information on all of my Ravelry project pages for anything that I missed, like needle sizes. Um, yeah, I think I didn't say the needle sizes, but yeah, I'm really excited to be doing another test for her and I guess that's really it. Decided to do the good wool and it's in freshwater blue, I believe. Um, and yeah, that's really, that's it for these guys. So now that we have all the whips accounted for, um, I'm gonna pull out my little journal, um, kind of Leslie of um, Knit California style. I do have like some projects and goals and make nines and stuff like that already in here. So I guess we can first talk about like goals that I want to work on for this year, just kind of like fibery goals. So the first one is make more garments. I have like four three or four sweaters and two vests. Um, I only started knitting like really two years ago. I learned how to knit when I was little, um, but you know, middle school, high school, college got in the way, <laughs> you know, life. And then the pandemic happened and my husband went away for some training and I thought I, I need to do something with my time. So I picked up knitting again and I haven't stopped and I don't plan on it anytime soon. Um, so yeah, I just would really like to make some more garments for myself and for my husband um, and kind of like get fit down for both of us. So yeah, that is my first goal. And I'd say with my three sweaters I have on the needles, that might get accomplished. <laughs> um, my second goal is I want to knit a pair of socks every month. Um, we are at the end of January. It is literally the last day of January as I'm filming this. And I haven't 
finished a pair of socks yet but that's okay um because i really want to do an advent like a sock advent kind of deal for my husband this year um i think that'd be really fun and he really enjoys the sock that socks that i knit for him um but maybe it won't be a 24 like sock maybe it'll be like a 10 sock advent or something um but yeah i really like to do that for him and speaking of my husband i really want to knit him a sweater um and he has a sweater in mind it's like a childhood sweater that he wants me to recreate but i'm not planning on doing that anytime soon um but i do want to make him the lanark pullover by the crayabea um since it is kind of a unisex sweater with a zip um he does like those and he has a few that are ready to wear that aren't the best honestly and i think it'd be really nice if i made him one and the convenient thing is that we are surprisingly this same bus circumference so just need to figure out how much ease he, he would like um and then kind of getting away from the knitting um i want to get into weaving um my husband's aunt passed away before he was born but she was also really into fiber arts she was actually when she went to school for fiber arts and she was really into weaving um and we have one of her looms and i just want to figure out if it works um and really get to that because it seems really nice and it's like a, a smaller loom so i could make like scarves or something on it nothing that crazy so yeah i really want to you know honor her in what i'm doing yeah and then my last goal that i have is as you probably noticed me saying earlier i this there might be some spinning on here and i really want to be more consistent with spinning i got a wheel like a castle treadle wheel about two years ago um but since we do have a small condo it's been at my in-laws house and i'll spin up there even though we do go up there a lot um we're also doing a lot of things so i'm not always spinning um and i did actually get an electric eel wheel nano 2.0 um as like a birthday Christ christmas present to me um and i want to like be more consistent with that and to kind of help with that i got a fiber club from the little fiber co and i actually have it here um uh, it's a mystery club I don't know if you guys saw the advertisement and I can go for the printables. So it is actually a cookware fiber club and each month she'll come out with a tonal um, based on a piece of cookware, which I think is really cute. Um, and then each month will have different fibers too and i don't have a lot of experience with different kinds of fibers i've just spun merino um but if you want to take a sneak peek if no one has gotten this i'm gonna put it in black and white um now and this is the colorway it's called agave and it's actually 100 percent romney um and i think i like it <laughs> um and i got the four ounces just so i have a little bit more to play with and what i'm planning on doing is just getting like an undyed romney or something equivalent um to ply it with so i can get a little bit more can i i can play with it a little bit more and yeah that is my plan so that is that and i'm really excited to do that and we are back to not black and white 
All right, so that's that. And that is my goals for spinning. Um, and then also in the vein of Leslie, I also have Make 9. Um, and I did make a graphic, which I can put here and I can just kind of like go over all the patterns that I have on there and you might notice that one of them is actually on the needles um so the first one is the lighthouse keeper pullover which is the lovely pinky purple guy um so already check that one off and uh, the second one is a lanark sweater for my husband and I already have yarn picked out for that. I have some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in a brown. Uh, I can't remember. It's like Grizzly Heather or something. And so I'm going to use that. I swatched for this sweater a while ago and I don't remember what needle I got gauge on to be honest. <laughs> um, but I'll just swatch again. No big deal. All right. And then the third one is a stride cardigan um, by Drea Renee Knits. Um, and I don't necessarily have yarn picked out for this, but I do know that um, I believe Maya, and I can't remember her YouTube channel off the top of my head, but I believe she made um a stride cardigan out of linen quill so that's what i'm thinking about doing with my leftovers um maybe using the pink for the stripes and then getting maybe more of the pale mushroom or some other um main color for that sweater but i also do have um some wandering flock minis and I don't think it'll be enough for an entire sweater but yeah we'll see um still still thinking on that one um and then the next one is a the shocking stripe sweater which is also by uh Tori Knits of Tori Knits NYC Tori U of Tori Knits NYC um and I do have yarn picked out for that one already um I am going to be using Magpie Fiber Swanky Sock in their Beevalong colorways from last year. Um, and those, I'm going to be doing the main color in Queen Beaver, which is was that blue with the speckles on it. And then the contrasting color is, I believe I picked Stag Bunny. I can't remember, but I already have it all picked out. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to start that one too. And then my fourth one is the Loomy, Loom, Loomy sweater, um, by Sorry Norland. Um, and I also have yarn picked out for that one. Um, I've had this pattern in my cart forever, but I have not bought it. I don't know why. Um, Maybe just when I'm ready to start the pattern or start knitting, I'll buy the pattern. Um, but I have the yarn picked out. I have some one of a kind magpie nest worsted in kind of what looks like their bougie beaver colorway. So that like light rose goldy pink. And then one of my friends actually snatched me some worsted weight yarn from Goodwill, I think. And it's another it's like a red when I start the pattern when I start the sweater I'll show you um so I'm gonna pair those two get together the magpie will be the um the contrast and then the other yarn is gonna be the main color and that'll be my second um color work sweater actually so I think that'll be really exciting to kind of see how I knit color work and just like how I can improve and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, the next one, I think it's, there's two 
that I think could be in the same place. So what's on my Make 9 is actually the Magnolia Bloom um, by Camilla Vaud. And I think I could knit that in some New Tidin yarn. Um, but I haven't really decided yet. And then kind of if I don't want to do the Magnolia Bloom, I also want to do the Date Night sweater by Kadri. Um, and it's kind of the same vibe. There's like a lace with bobble panel down the front while this one has like a lace bobble yoke. Um, and I think for the date night, I have yarn picked out, which is Woolberry Fiber Co. Um, so we'll see which one I go with. Um, but I would like to ideally knit both of them this year. And then speaking of unspun, muted in yarn. Um, the next one I want to do is the Felix pullover, which was designed in, um, muted in. Um, and it is by Amy Christoffers, I believe. The name is escaping me. Um, and yeah, I have a stash of Honor Rock Airs muted in. Um, so I just need to pick out a color which color I would like the sweater in and get like a matching mohair if I want to do the mohair. So yeah. And then down to the last two. Um the I actually want to knit some more accessories for like shawls and stuff. Um so I want to knit the pressed flowers shawl. Um I also believe maybe that I can't remember. Yes flower shawl by blank I can't remember the designer off the top of my head um but I also have yarn picked out for that um it's already wound and everything um but it's Miss Babs in like her giant one of her giants games um and I don't remember the colorways off the top of my head but I missed the I can buy myself flowers then along by young folk knits but that's okay I can knit this whenever I want to. Um, so, yeah. And then the last one I was inspired by Bethany from Woolberry Fiberco because she loves this sweater if you follow her. It is the Hume sweater. Um, and yeah, I just, I was not sure about the split hem for a while. But I test knit another one of Tori's patterns, um, the Manhattan vest, and that has a split hem. And I've actually been digging it a lot. I wear it when it's like a cool day, when it's like not cold enough to wear a sweater. So I think the split hem is something that I might integrate more as modifications for my patterns. So. I think that's it. I think those are all the things and I am hoping to film maybe twice a month, maybe once a week. I haven't really decided yet. I guess whenever I feel like there's enough progress on my projects. Um, and hopefully the next time I see you, I will have some finished objects um, and I'll have some pictures. So yeah. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.